<laughs> Close second. Okay. Experimenting with life in years. Om Akyan Timidam Dasya Gena Jena Sarakaya Chaksu Om Velitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurvena Maha Shri Chaitanya Vinobhistam Stavitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gadam Mayam Dadati Svapadantikam Pandeham Shiro Shri Yuta Padakamalam Shiguru Vaishnavam Shcha Sri Rupam Sagrajakam Sagana Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sadutam Parijana Sahita Krishna Chaitanya Deva Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Shcha He Krishna Hirana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Ganta Nara Ganta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gauram Gira Devrinda Vanishuri Vishapana Suti Devi Pranamami Hare Priya Pancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Devacha Patita Nam Vavadevyo Vaishnavevyo Janulambita Bujo Kamakana Dato Sankirtanai Papitaro Kamalaya Taxo Vishwambaro Vijabaro Yugadharma Falo Vande Jagatpriya Karo Karuna Avataro Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nitya Ganda Sado Dido Karo Daya Pushpanvanto Chitta Sando Tamo Nuto Panchatattva makam prishnam bhakta rupa sarupa kam bhakta avataram bhakta kyam namami bhakta shakti kam Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Shri Adrita Gadadara Shivasari Gaura Bhakta Me Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shiva Prabhupada Ki. So we were requested to speak a little bit about Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And that is a very extensive subject matter. This is simultaneous or not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and so we can approach it from different angles of vision. Why did Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu come to the world? Well, the scriptures, especially Chaitanya Charitamrita, gives us uh, six reasons. One, three are called the external, the reasons that are apparent for the conditioned souls to understand. And then there's three which is called the internal reasons which are not so apparent and very mysterious and practically impossible to understand. Mm -hmm. You could have given the class if you want. <laughs> Probably do better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so it's described <clears throat> that at, during the time in Navadvip Dham, there was uh, very much intellectualism. People were quite intelligent. They had known Shastras, at least most of the Shastras, and were spending much, much time discussing and debating Shastras from different angles of vision. But people also had a strong inclination to material sense gratification. Although they were nicely situated materially, they always wanted to increase their material opulence, their material happiness. <clears throat> so people were worshipping in a very extensive way, or maybe you may say a regular way, the demigods. Because Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that the worship of the demigods is for those who are less intelligent, or for those who are simply interested in gaining benefits from the material energy. 
And so people were inclined to that type of worship. And they were establishing deities of the different devas and performing formal puja. And after they were done, they were also throwing the deities into the river because there was no use for the deities after the worship. Many things went on also. Um, they were again, they were, because of their intellectualism and because they haven't took to the process of bhakti fully, there's always a sense of boredom or a sense of looking for something more to experience. So they were engaged in all kinds of activities, such as marriages between cats and dogs. They're performing marriages for animals. Just to keep what we say somewhat active in material life. Because material life, if you keep if you don't keep changing it, it gets boring. And when you when you change it, it seems like it gets better. But then after a while you have to change again because that becomes boring. Yeah. Mostly it's boring because there's no substance to material life. It's based on the body, not on the actual person. And so this was going on quite regularly. Now, Chi Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before he appeared, he sent some of his most intimate associates to pave the way for his appearance, such as Sri Advaita Charya, Srila Haridas Thakur, Mukunda, Sri Vas Thakur, Kundarik Vidyanidhi, and others. And uh, especially there was very few devotees at the time there, and they were mostly unable to make any difference with the population because people were so set on increasing their material happiness that they weren't interested in devotional service. And so especially Advaita Charya, he was considered the king of all of the Brahmins. He was respected for his intelligence and his position, but still he found it very difficult to change people towards devotional life. And so he became very unhappy seeing, and this is the nature of a great soul. The great soul are satisfied within themselves, but they're not satisfied because they see the conditioned souls suffering in the material world and wasting their time and activities they have that don't bring them any real happiness or benefit. And so they feel for the conditioned souls and they make efforts to try to bring them where, they're, where they can find real happiness and that's at the lotus feet of the Lord in devotional service. But Advaita Charya and any other devotees were finding it very impossible to preach. So the way to which I was, of course, he, he is the incarnation of Mahavishnu. So he's not a small person. Combination with Siddha Shiva, which is the original Shiva in the spiritual world. So these two manifestations of this uh, spiritual aspect of the Lord came in together in one form and appeared in this world as Sri Advaita Acharya. Now, because he has this Shiva mood in him, and Shiva is very compassionate, in fact, he's always trying to help the conditioned souls become Krishna conscious. And so he, he was thinking, what, what can I do to save these fools and rascals? And so he was think, trying different ways, but nothing. So he was thinking, maybe I should just take out my chakra and just kill them all. <laughs> What's the use of their existence? Because merely material life is just a waste of life. What do you do? You eat, sleep, mate, and you do all kinds of silly things, and then you die. <laughs> and then you have some friends who do the same thing, and you call that family. <laughs> So material life is just what it is. It's just an external manifestation of the real thing. It's like the shadow of the person. It's not really the person, because the person is the actual spiritual being that lives within the body, but not has not, but simply cannot find happiness simply by keeping the body and the body's desires foremost in life. 
So he was thinking I should just kill them all. But then I th and then he thought maybe I should call the Supreme Lord. It's the job of the Supreme Lord to come and maybe by him is his coming that he can make a difference. So he made a plan to call the Lord. <laughs> he went down to the banks of the Holy River Ganga, very nicely set up a beautiful altar with Shalagran Shilas on the altar. And he decorated the Shilas with garlands, flowers, sandalwood paste, and tulsi leaves. And every day he would, in very loud voices, call the Supreme Lord and worship the Shila simultaneously. So this went on for some time. And so because of that, it mentions that the Supreme Lord was deciding to come because of the call of Advaita Charya. So this is one of the reasons why the Lord appeared in this world as it explained. And of course, then what did he come? He came to do the business that he was thinking of doing, and that is uplifting the conditioned souls. And being Kali Yuga, there was only one means by which they can live unlift lift up the conditioned soul. Kalir Doshanidi Rajan Asti Eko Mahagun Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha That no matter what form of spiritual practice you perform in this age, it may elevate you to a little higher stage above the material energy, but you cannot find complete satisfaction or perfection in these activities unless you take to the direct process of complete glorification of the Lord. Then as recommended in this age, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. So the Lord came to what we say, bring the Yuga Dharma. Yuga means age and Dharma means the religion. So the religion of the age is very simple. Chant, the holy names of the Lord, when you feel happy, dance. You get tired, you take a little foodstuffs offered to the Lord, prasadam, and then you continue with chanting again. And then you dance some more, and then you get a little tired, a little foodstuffs, get revived, and chant again, and you dance some more. And this way, you finish your life like that, and go back to Godhead. <laughs> That's the process. If you could do that, you'd go back to Godhead, no problem. But we won't do that. We'll do something else. <laughs> That's the problem. But if we could do that all the time, or at least most of the day, then the spiritual world will become, the material world will become the spiritual world automatically. And so he came as a secondary, and it's called the external reason, to inaugurate the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, yada yada yadharma sya bhaganir bhavati bharata abhutanam adharma sya tadatmanam sajamiyaham pavitranayam sarunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstarpanartayam sambhavami yuge yuge. Whenever there is a increase of irreligion and a rise of irreligious persons, on the planet, I come. And I come to reestablish the Dharma and remove your religion and also to give pleasure to my devotees. So that is the third reason why the Lord appeared, these three. The cause of Advaita Charya, establishing the Yoga Dharma and reawaken people to spiritual life through the process of devotional service. So, but there are three internal reasons, which are the Lord's personal reasons why he came. And these three reasons are interesting. There was a story in the, in the it's mentioned in the Chaitanya Mangala by Lochan Das Thakur, where he describes that Krishna was in Dwarka, he's surrounded by his queens, and his principal <coughs> queen was with him, Rukmini. And she was in a very loving way massaging his lotus feet. And she was massaging and massaging and massaging. And her emotions were becoming very strong. And finally she was starting to speak in a very emotional way. And she said, my dear Lord, oh Lord, you don't know how wonderful 
you are. You don't know how wonderful your lotus feet are. And she was speaking so lovingly with so much affection and so much devotion that uh, Krishna, now he's Dwarka Dish, and he's in Dwarka, he's the king of Dwarka, and he's thinking, hmm, I don't know how wonderful I am. Do you ever think about that? How wonderful you are? <laughs> Some people do that all the time. <laughs> Not only do they do that, they make sure other people understand also. <laughs> That's not our program. <laughs> That's material life. And so, then, in that mood of expressing that love, she finally came to the point, she said, but there is just one person, only one, in all of existence, anywhere, who knows how wonderful you are. And that is Srimati Radharani. Hmm. So when Krishna heard that, he was thinking, hmm. I don't know how wonderful I am. It's a good idea. I like to know. <laughs> and but there is a person who knows how wonderful I am. So how will I be able to find out how wonderful I am? There's only one way I can do that: is I have to become that person. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu, his internal reasons, his heartfelt apparent reasons for appearance, is to experience. Radharani's love for him, the happiness that she feels in that love for him, and what are the qualities about him that attracts her. So these are the three internal reasons. So in order to do that, he manifested himself as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nahi Anya. Radharani and Krishna in one form, but the mood is Radharani and the person is Krishna. So you, when you think about it, it's, he's quite a, a mysterious manifestation of the Lord. He's Krishna, but he is in the role of his pure devotee, well, I can't say devotee, but his internal energy who has pure love for him on the highest platform, Srimati Radharani. So in order to experience that love and to also understand what about that, what is it about her love that is so attractive, he becomes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Therefore, when he, in his manifestation as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was never in the role of the Supreme Lord. He was always in the role of the pure devotee who was worshipping the Supreme Lord. So he's a devotee of himself, worshipping himself from the position of his pure devotee. Interesting. And so, therefore he's called Goranga. And she is called Gorangi. Taptakanchana Gorangi, Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Prashivanam Sukhidevi Pramami Hari she is golden in color, and he is golden in color also. Anga means limbs. So their body form is also full of molten gold. Just to divert a section, a, se a, section, a second away from the talk, and I'm sure many of you have been to Mayapur, yeah? How many have been to Mayapur? Pretty good, that's good. Some places I go, I get asked for hands, and there's like one hand coming up slowly. It's good, yeah. The Srila Prabhupada said we should go to Mayapur every year during the Gaur Purnima festival for at least eight days. He wrote that and spoke it. But when you go, you see Panchatattva there, beautiful Panchatattva deities. Beautiful big deities, the biggest deities I think in, in, in the world of the Lord. You know, when deities are small, they're sweet. When they get big, they, they somewhat lose their sweetness, but not Mahaprabhu. <laughs> he becomes even sweeter. He, he, he's, he defies all, all logic. <laughs> so when you look at the deities, if you carefully note that there are, they're all golden, but there's three different colors of gold on the altar. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is pure, solid gold. He's a monkey. 
And then you have Gadadhar Pandit, is also of the same exact color as Sri Chaitanya. It's just pure love. But then you have Srivas and Advaita, they're gold with a whitish color connected to the. If you look carefully, you'll see it's like a whitish color gold. You can see tinges of white in it. And Nityananda, he's unique. He's reddish gold. <laughs> so when Prabhupada was asked about his in, internal mood, he never answered, but he said, my color in the spiritual world is reddish gold. <laughs> Which means that he's coming from the tattva of Sri Nityananda Ram. And so, Lord Chaitanya manifested that color to and exhibited her internal loving mood in his pastimes in this material world. He never liked to be called the Lord. In fact, when he was called the Lord, he would block his ears and sometimes become a little angry. Anyone who would refer to him as the Lord, he would say, no, I am not the Lord. I am the devotee of Krishna. I am not Krishna. But he was Krishna. So he's hiding something. What is he saying? During that time, and then you find it even today, those of you who spend time in India, you know there are people who like to claim them to be the Supreme Lord or an incarnation of the Lord in order to get some followers, to get some prestige, to get pop, some popularity, get some material remunerations. And so this goes on because this is the material world. Just like there is real money and then there's counterfeit. <laughs> so there are counterfeit gods all over the place. <laughs> and you'll see. And so the Lord, in order to uh, try to destroy that mood, that the conditioned soul, or the living entity in the material world is not God, but he is, he is Jiva Sarupai Krishna Nichidas. He's a servant of the Lord. So and that was also quite fashionable at that time that people would also claim to be an incarnation or they're actually the Supreme Lord himself. So Mahaprabhu, one of, his, one of his programs was to destroy that idea by saying it's not possible for the, for the living entity in the material world to be God, although he was. And only once or twice, in fact, there was one beautiful time when in the house of Sri Vastakur, uh, the Lord appeared there one early, early in the morning, and uh, he was in a different mood. His mood was completely different. He was in the mood of the Supreme Lord. So he came, and there were devotees there. Normally, they would go out on Harinam every day. Udil Aruna Koda Nabaji Dwijamani Goda Amani Jagi Tatari Tatari Baji Loro Gana Gana Jama Jiloro. It's a beautiful song sung by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur describing Lord Chaitanya would go out every day. He would leave after he would take his bath. He would immediately get dressed and come out with his associates and go chanting and dancing in the village, waking up all the people. They're sleeping. You're wasting your time. <laughs> Why don't you use your time to worship the Supreme Lord? That way your time will be used in a beneficial way. And then people would come out of the houses, oh, there's, there is Nimai Pandit, because they knew him as Nimai Pandit. And they would see him. And they, and they would say, oh, he's so beautiful. And that was one of the ways he changed people's minds because of his appearance. He was so beautiful. His color was like molten gold. He was always smiling and he was two meters tall. <laughs> really tall. <clears throat> you know, his arms reached all the way down to his knees. And he would sing and dance with his devotees and they would go through the villages and then he would wind up at the Ganga, take his bath, go back home, take some Maha Prashadam, rest a little bit, come out again and start chanting and dancing. And would do that every day. But this time, 
he said to the devotees, you know, why not let's, uh, so he, he came into the house of Srivas Thakur, and Srivas worships Shalagram Shila, his whole altar is full of Shilas. The Lord did something. He went right on the altar, took the Shilas in his, in his cloth, sat on the altar with the Shilas sitting on him and said, worship me. <laughs> and the devotee, whoa! <laughs> they were so happy because, you know, they, they can't say anything that he's the Lord, but they know it <laughs> because he gets angry. But now he's opening up and he's, oh, worship me. So the devotees began kirtan and then they're singing and they're dancing. And then they bring, then this went on throughout the whole day. And then they, uh, and then they decided to, to uh, perform Abhishek for the Lord. So the devotees were bringing big clay pots full of Ganga water and passing it out. They make big lines from the Ganga all the way up to where Mahabrabhu was, because Srivastava's house was nearby. And they were just filling the pots and pour, they would bring it and then Advaita and Nityananda and some of the more intimate associates would be pouring the water and Lord Chaitanya, and he's there fully clothed and being bathed like that. And so this went on, and then everybody was really enjoying, you know, bathing the Lord. Then at one point when that was over, because Mahaprabhu had noticed, hmm, he called, he called Srivas over, Srivas, who's that lady standing in the Ganga? Because there was one old lady, she was elderly, and she was just sitting, standing in the middle of the Ganga, filling the pots and handing it to the next devotee so they could bring it to Mahaprabhu. So she stayed way in the background. She was elderly, like a maidservant. And then Srivan said, well, that's my maidservant, Dukhi. And Lord Chaitanya said, Dukhi? You know, Dukhi means miserable. <laughs> He said, now we will give her a new name. We will now call her Suki. <laughs> Suki. <laughs> Happy. Instead of Dukey, miserable. And so he blessed her. Why did he do that? What was it about her that attracted the Lord's attention? Is that she didn't want any recognition for herself. All she wanted to do was serve the other devotees. So she remained as, as in the background as she could. But the Lord noticed her humility and her enthusiasm for service, and so he blessed her. And he also gave her love of God by doing that. And that was Mahaprabhu's mercy. He would sometimes, when he would be pleased with someone's devotion, immediately he would bestow upon them love of God, and all of a sudden you're, you've reached perfection. That was Mahaprabhu. He did that often. That was the, the mercy that he gave when he was personally present. Now, in order to get it, you have to work for it. <laughs> but it's still available. It's still available. And so, uh, the, the program went on, and then uh, Mahaprabhu changed clothes, and then they bring, and then they also they did a boga offering. So they were bringing fruit and. Uh, various types of sugar cane and uh, various types of food items and they were just piling it up in front of Mahaprabhu and he was eating it whatever they gave him and he, and he they would bring you know bananas and various types of vegetables and he just eat them he was eating everything his name is Vishwambar Vishwabhar means one who is, nourishes the whole universe. So for him to eat everything is nothing. He eats 56 times in Jagannath Puri every day. <laughs> so, and so he was eating everything and they were running out of things to bring. And he kept saying, and just like, you know, when uh, Govardhan was when Krishna was performing his pastime on Govardhan Hill, Govardhan Hill was also saying, Aniyor, Aniyor, bring more, bring more. 
And so Mahaprabhu was saying, bring more, bring more. So they were running from, they were going to different villages trying to find more things to bring. And the more and more devotees started to come and the place was really full of devotees. Everybody was so happy seeing Mahaprabhu in that, that position of accepting the worship. And this went on for a little bit. And then they did the, the they ended up with the Gorarti. Kiva Jayo Jayo Gorachande Adulti Kesha Jayo They sang that beautiful song, and the Lord was just accepting all of the worship. And this was when this one went on and on. Everybody was in ecstasy, singing, dancing, and worshiping the Lord. Everybody was so happy. Finally, this was this was going on. Oh, now it's the evening time, and the Lord stopped, and then He turned to everyone. He said, "Take a benediction." Any one of you, all of you, ask anything from me. Whatever you want, ask. And the devotees were a little puzzled. Because they're thinking, what do we have? You know, we're seeing you. We don't need to ask for anything. <laughs> this is all we can ask for. But the Lord was insistent. And so he would sometimes point to someone, ask. <laughs> and sometimes they would say, well... I'll make my father a devotee. No, no, I would say, you know, tatastu. <laughs> okay. And then, so in other words, whatever they had, but he never asked for anything for themselves. He always asking for others. Or sometimes they would say, well, you could also give me, you know, pure devotion to you. And devotees, they would ask only for spiritual things for themselves and for others. So at one point, and the devotee said to the Lord, give Mukunda love of God. Now Mukunda is one of the intimate associates of the Lord who sings for the Lord. He sings very beautiful and the Lord always dances when he sings. But as soon as the Lord heard the name Mukunda, he became very silent and, se and serious. He looked like he was quite disturbed. And then he spoke. He said, Bakunda, he is a rascal. <laughs> he is the type of person who comes and offers the obeisances to your feet and then takes a stick and hits you on the head. <laughs> That's Mukunda. And the devotees couldn't understand. They would say, Mukunda, he's so dear to you. He always sings and you dance. And we always see in wonderful relationships. But well, then the Lord explained. Well, he goes every night, he goes out to these different yogis and he hears what they say. And he listens to people who speak that karma and jnana is superior to bhakti. And he agrees with them. Because <laughs> he's very simple by nature, therefore whoever he's with, he agrees with. <laughs> you know people like that? <laughs> And they always want to be friendly with everybody, so they agree with everybody. <laughs> so he's like that. So the Lord said, I don't want to see Mukunda for 10 million births. Wow. Because <laughs> it says, Lord Chaitanya is soft as a rose and as hard as a thunderbolt. He can be very strong. And so the devotees were shocked to hear that. So they were thinking, we can't give up yet. And so they said, well, my dear Lord, please. And they start glorifying Mukunda, praying, at, pleading to the Lord. The Lord wouldn't change. And finally, the Lord became a little softer. And he, he said, all right. He can come. First he said, no. First he said, I don't ever want to see Mukunda again. That was the statement. Then he said, all right, he can come and see me after 10 million births. 
Now Mukunda's in range, he's hearing all this, but he's just, he's from a distance away. And then when the Lord said that, he heard that, he became ecstatic. And he started dancing and singing. Only 10 million verse. Only 10 million verse. I will see. I will see. Only after 10 million verse, I will see. Well, the Lord noticed Mukunda was happy at the fact that, you know, he's willing to wait that long to get the Lord's association again. And the Lord said, all right, bring him immediately. <laughs> And so he came and fell at the feet of the Lord, and the Lord chastised him for his, you know, rascal activities. And he, re he apologized. <laughs> so then the devotees were asking for different people were asking. He said to Haridas Thakur, Haridas Thakur, take a benediction for me. Haridas Thakur said, I don't need anything. I'm happy. I'm simply would like to chant your name, and I'm happy just, just having your associate. No, take a benediction. All right, and any birth that I, I take birth, any place I take birth, anywhere I take birth, that would be a birth in the family of your devotees so I can take the remnants of their prasadam. That was his, I mean, the Lord granted him that. Then he said to Srivas, Srivas, you remember? You remember how you, before I came into this world, you used to go hear Devananda Pandit speak about Srimad Bhagavatam. He was so expert at reciting all of the verses in Bhagavatam. And you would go to hear him. And one time you went to one of his satsangs, and his disciples were there, and he was reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam. And he was reciting it so nicely, and you become absorbed. And as you were becoming absorbed, you were also becoming ecstatic. And in that ecstasy, you started to exhibit it expressions of happiness but that was disturbing to the other devotees there so they started to think what we should do so they came and they picked you up and they took you outside and put you on the ground and walked back in and Devananda Pandit didn't do anything to stop them and then after some time you came out of your ecstasy and you wiped the dirt off your clothes and you went back to your place and you sat in your room all alone, you were very sad. And you picked up the Srimad Bhagavatam and you started to read and you were reading and reading and reading. But at one point I entered into your heart just to give you some happiness, some peace. And after some time you were feeling very happy and very peaceful again. Do you remember Srimas? And Srimas fainted. <laughs> he fainted because he now he understood why he experienced what he experienced. And so Srivast was very, he got the mercy. Uh, he said to, he said to the devotees, you know, there's one devotee, he lives very nearby, his name is um, Kolovich, his name is Srihar. Kolovich means banana seller. So he was a banana seller. He was called Kolovich or Sridhar. And he said, go call him. And they said, where? Nobody knew who he was. And the Lord said, you just walk in that direction and just call out, Sridhar, 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 the Lord wants to see you. So they were going, finally, they were calling, and finally they got near Sridhar, and he, oh, somebody's calling my name, oh. It's the devotees of Nimai Pandit. Oh. And they came. They said, Sridhar, Nimai Pandit, actually, the Supreme Lord, he's here. He wants to see you. Me? Yeah. Okay. So he came. <laughs> came into the assembly. When he saw the Lord, he immediately fainted. And then he got up. And Sridhar, he said, you have been my devotee for so many lives. Now, when the Lord used, used to go to Sridhar's place, he would, um, Sridhar would sell banana leaves, and banana cups, and banana plates. And whatever he would make, he would use half of it to worship the Ganges, which was very little. And the rest he would live on. And he had this, he lived in this shack it had so many holes in it, so when it would rain, all the rain would come in this inside. 
But he didn't care. He was always chanting the holy name of the Lord. And sometimes he would stay up all night chanting. And he would, he would chant loud. And then the people who were around there were trying to sleep and they would say, Sheena, Sridhar, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and he would keep chanting. They say, they would say to each other, he must be hungry, let's give him some. So they, they, would, so they took some gourd or some zucchini or threw it at him. Here, eat this and go to sleep. <laughs> but he would, he would ignore them and just keep chanting. The Lord would come in the form of Nimai Pandit, the very beautiful Brahmana, and he would say, hey, sweetheart. How much for your banana leaves, banana cups? And then he would quote the price from Sri Bharat. And uh, the Lord would say, too much. You're cheating the Brahmins. <laughs> no, no, he said, no, no, no. This is the best price you could get. You can go anywhere. You'll find that this is the, the best. No, no, Sri You're trying to make a you're trying to make money by cheating the Brahmins. And I know you have a big pile of wealth, and someday I'm going to expose that wealth to everybody. <laughs> and Sridhar couldn't understand what he was saying. <laughs> he was so simple and so humble, and all he would do was just worship the Lord. So now, when the Lord called him, he saw that same Nimai Pandit, that Brahmin, who used to harass him all the time. And he fainted, and then he got up, and the Lord said, I'm very pleased with you. Please ask me for some benediction. He said, what benediction can I ask? I'm seeing you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, ask for some benediction. The Lord was very insistent. If the Lord wants to give you something, you've got to take it. <laughs> and if the Lord wants to take away something, you can't keep it. <laughs> so he... Uh, then the Lord was persistent. He said, Sridhar, I'll give you a nice wife. I'll give you all the, I'll give you wealth on the same level as Indra. I'll give you a planet. <laughs> Sridhar Swami, Sridhar, not Swami, Sridhar said, my dear Lord, why do you want to make my life miserable? <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> what am I going to do with all that stuff? <laughs> so he was saying all of these material things are simply a botheration. <laughs> and so the Lord uh, said, the, the Lord gave up, didn't know what to say. Sridhar, what, what, say something, ask for something. And then the Sridhar said, please, my Lord, in any birth that I come in this material world, Come and harass me and take my banana leaves and <laughs> <laughs> the Lord was very pleased by his humility. So one after another the Lord was giving benedictions to everyone. Finally someone came up and said, My dear Lord, give love of God to your mother Sachin Mata. Again the Lord became very silent. And then he spoke. My mother, she's an offender. Oh, before he's the, 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 the goddess of fortune herself. Your mother, who is so dear to all of us and to you, how could, how could she be an offender? And then he explained. My older brother, you know, Vishwarup, he used to go to a Dvaita Charya's place, and Dvaita Charya would always teach him from the Vedas. And he became so expert in knowledge of the Vedas that he was thinking, I'm finished with material life. And because his parents, Mosachi Mata and Nagana, they wanted to get in and married. So he just decided one day to leave home and he never came back. Now, Sachi Mata and Jagadath Mishra had eight daughters that were born and they died right at childbirth. And then Vishwarup came and that was the prize of their life. And then, of course, Nimai, who they named Vishwarupar, he named. So now, when Vishwarup was gone, only left was thought it was Nimai Pandit, her only son. So, the Lord said, and then I started to go and hear from Advaita Acharya. 
And my mother was thinking, oh no, I'm going to lose the other one. <laughs> so she said, she thought, she didn't speak, she just thought. She said, Adwaita? He is not Adwaita. He is Dwaita. Dwa Adwaita means one. And Dwaita means two. In other words, he's dualistic. <laughs> He's dualistic. So she thought that, but she didn't say anything. So the Lord knew that. So he said, she has offended Advaita Charya. And then the devotee said, well, what, what, what can she do to get relief from the fence? And I said, the Lord said, well, she has to take the dust of his lotus feet and place it on her head and then she'll be free from that offense. So Advaita is there, and he's thinking, hmm, my foot dust on the mother of the Lord, Supreme Person, no, no way. <laughs> so there was some resistance there. So, you know, Sachi Mat is there, Advaita is there. And then the kirtan went on, and after some time, the kirtan was so ecstatic, Advaita fell unconscious, and then the Lord looked at his mother. Okay. <laughs> Here you go, this is your opportunity. So she went and stole the dust. <laughs> Put it on her head and the Lord was very pleased. So why did he do that? Why, his mother really didn't commit any offense. But he wanted to show one particular point, which is really important. Do not carry any negative thoughts in your mind against anyone. Because although it's in the mind, it's not an offense. But if it stays in the mind, it also may also grow. And if it grows, it can turn into something else, some speech or some activity. So he was teaching the most subtle form of, of life is to keep your mind always connected to the spiritual realm, and then your mind will always be in the best position. Mm. Never think bad about anyone. Of course, we... Thing. We don't think bad about anyone, but we know there are many bad people out there who do bad things, who hurt other people. So we don't feel very happy about that. But we understand that they are just victims of the material energy also. So we don't, we don't think good of them, but it's better not to waste your time thinking bad about them either. <laughs> because it just makes the mind, you know, unhappy. <laughs> So the Lord wanted to teach that. So for 21 hours, the Lord performed what is called the Mahaprakash Lila. It's mentioned in Chaitanya Bhagavat. In detail, how he, from devotee to devotee, he was giving benedictions. And, and just, just giving his association as a Supreme Personality. That was one of the rarest times when he actually uh, exhibited himself for who he actually was. And all the devotees were happy. Mahaprabhu was traveling one time through South India. This was when he was going on his South Indian tour. He was all alone. He was, and people were following him because he was chanting and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and chanting and chanting and dancing and dancing and dancing and chanting and dancing and and more chanting and dancing. And he was making everybody Krishna conscious. And so he came to one area in, in India known as Kurvashetra. And there was a particular Brahmin who lived there. He was called the Kurva Brahmin. He was very, very devotional. And so he made him a point to meet the Lord. And he requested the Lord, while you're in Kurvashetra, stay at my home. We will provide everything you need. So the Lord was pleased and he did. So for four days he stayed at the home of the Kurma Brahma, and the family worshipped him so nicely, prepared meals for him, massaged his feet, gave him all of the comforts that he, he, he was, uh, whatever they needed to make him comfortable. He was so happy, and he spoke to them about Krishna for four days. And after four days, it was time for the Lord to go on. And so the Lord went on, and then he's leaving, and he said, you know, 
made his point, I have to go continue my tour. But then the Korma Brahman was following him. And the Lord looked back and he saw the Korma Brahmins coming behind him. And when he stopped, he turned. He said, Where are you going? I'm going with you. <laughs> you can't do that. You have your family. You have your yeah, you have your wife, you have your family, you have your everything is there. So he said in very nice words, you know, the heck with it. I don't want any of it. <laughs> and the Lord said, No, you can't do that. But I'll give you an instruction. You go back home and whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. Whoever you meet, teach him to chant Hare Krishna. He said, if you do that, you will never leave my association. And then he said, by my command, be guru, save the land. The Lord spoke very directly to teach that one doesn't have to change their material situation. They simply have to add Krishna to it. Grihe dako bone dako Sabdahadi Bali Dako. Wherever you are, whether you're a Grihasta, Brahmachari, Sanyas, whatever your position in society is or in the world, remain but become Krishna conscious. That's all. And in the way he explained that and give that Krishna consciousness to the others. Because Mahaprabhu's mission was three. One to inspire people to chant the holy names and to develop an attachment for chanting. That's the first thing. The second thing was to associate with and serve Vaishnavas. Vaishnav association means service to the Vaishnav, not just being in the same area with others, thinking of ways by which one can serve the other devotees. That is, Vaishnav Seva, we always think how to serve. How can I serve? And they're always all, and if you think like that, you'll always get ideas. Krishna will always help you. And the third was Jiva Doya. Jiva refers to the, to the living entity in the material world, and Doya means compassion. To be show compassion to those who are not engaged in spiritual life and to help them come to spiritual life. In other words, we call, sometimes we call it preaching or reaching out to others. Now, this is Mahaprabhu's three-point mission, is to develop a taste for chanting. How do you develop a taste for chanting? By associating and serving Vaishnavas. That is one of the main reasons by which the you awaken that taste for chanting. When you serve other Vaishnavas, when you and when you do kirtan and chant more and more and more, that taste will develop. And of course, so in serving and associating with devotees and thinking of ways how one can connect to in some way to reach out. And there's so many ways. We were at one seminar one time and one of the Seminars was to think of different ways you could preach Krishna consciousness. So that everyone was going around the room and everyone was giving ideas on how to preach, how to reach. And we came up with over 40 different ways. You can somehow come out, come reach out in different medias, in different venues, in different ideas on how to spread Krishna consciousness. There's so many ways. Of course, the best and easiest, the most direct and most recommended way is, is book distribution. That is the, as Srila Prabhupada said, book distribution is our best form of preaching. And so, not everyone can do book distribution, but everyone can somehow or other think of ways by which, just like I remember Kadama Kana Maharaj, all glories to his devotion to Krishna, which is really amazing. Last night we spoke for about an hour and a half 
But one thing he, I remember him saying is that he would come in front of the devotees and say, okay, now here's a nice program you can all adopt. How many families in this congregation? And then they would give a number. And he said, all right, every, and then every day for one month, one family does a host the program. So if you have 30 families, you have 30 programs every month. That means if you do it every month, then you have three, you know, 365 programs. <laughs> so that's an that's an it's a pretty ingenious way. Oh, one one day a month I have to do a host of program and invite all the devotees. Of course, you will, not every devotee can go to every program, but at least there's programs every day. And that's the important thing. To always that somewhere in, in the congregation there is some satsang going on, some kirtan program going on, some prabhachan being explained. We can do that. I'm sure there's more, I don't know about this area of da, da, I can't get it right for some reason. I like Daru Brahman. Daru Brahman. Daru Brahman Var. Var Var. Okay. So I don't know if there's 30 families in this area, but I know in the creation rapture there's more than 30. <laughs> so you can spread it out over different. But you don't have to do it for 30. You can do it for 26 days, and then the other four days you go to the temple. <laughs> Once a week. <laughs> but it's an idea. And everyone gets a chance to, you know, all the ladies in each of the household get the chance to serve all the devotees by cooking. And uh, hosting a program in your home becomes a mandir. It's nice. So it's an idea. Think about it. Nobody ever gets excited about this one. <laughs> They all look at me and say, what else are you going to talk about, Marsh? <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice when you think about it. It's like in a place like London, when I preach in London. There is, I mean, London is huge. It's, they even, I mean, there's congregational sections in all sections of London that are each of its own congregation. So you can, there's an average of 10 programs going on every night of the week in London. Everywhere. There's always something going on. Two, three, four, five, six, ten, pro almost 10 programs every night somewhere. So uh, anytime you want to go to a program, something's happening, something, somewhere. So that's nice, and that's how we spread Krishna consciousness. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha through association with devotees here and enchanting the glories of the Lord. Well, I know we got our families, we got our work, we got our other things that we don't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have to do all of those other things. Forget it. <laughs> Really, if everybody in the world did that, the world would be Krishna conscious in no time, fast. So this is an idea, a nice formula. So, how did I get on that subject? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot where I came. Maharaj. Yeah, but even before that, somewhere in there. Who are you talking uh, about, about Mahaprabhu? Yeah. By, by, ma, by, by, ma, yeah, by my command, be guru, yeah. save the land. And then Lord Chaitanya said, if you do that, you will always have my association. You will you'll never feel separation. Yeah. And then when he was in Kormashetra, just before he had arrived, there was one Brahmin, he was a leper, he had a very strong case of leprosy. His name was Vasudev. And uh, his leprosy was so severe that he could not be with anyone. And so he lived alone. 
and his body was full of sores from leprosy. But, but Vasudeva was very humble, very devoted. And in his body, where the sores were, there were worms living in his body. And the, sometimes one of the worms would fall to the ground and he would pick it up and put it back where it <laughs> fell out. And he would think, God has given my body as a place for this worm to live. So he would think that's his rightful place. So that was his humility. And he was a devotee. Now he had heard that Mahaprabhu was coming through, so he wanted to see the Lord. He knew he couldn't associate, he just wanted to see. But the Lord passed through in Kurmashetra, and Vasudeva was not able to see the Lord. And so then he learned that the Lord had already left, and he was feeling so miserable. He was condemning himself. All I wanted to do was see him, that's all. And uh, and so wretched, so fallen. And the Lord, after he left, because he's the indwelling super soul in the hearts of all living beings, he knows everyone's mind and heart, he turned around, came back. And he went right to the place where Vasudev was staying. He went right up to Vasudev and embraced him. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced Vas. And when he was embraced by the Lord, his whole body became healthy. All of the sores were gone. He was completely whole. His body was just strong and healthy again. And then the Lord looked at him. And he said, Vasudev, you don't look happy. He said, I'm not. <laughs> and you think, why is he not happy? He got special mercy. But then he asked, why? Why are you not happy? Well, my Lord, you have shown me your special favor. And people will know that I have been given special favor by you. And then they will praise me and I will become proud. So this, this, if I become proud, that's the worst thing. So the Lord thought for a minute and he said, then do one thing, Vasudev, and you'll never become proud. He said, incessantly, that means without stopping, chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. He said, if you do that, you'll never become proud. So that's a, that's a lesson that the Lord also taught us, that here's the way to stay connected in the spiritual means is chant Satatam Kirtayam Gamam, always chant Hare Krishna. When you're walking, when you're talking, when you're whatever you're doing, remember Krishna. And the easiest way is Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 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 Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. What easier way can you get than that? Really practice. The more you do kirtan, the more you do japa, the more that stays with you throughout the day. Then you can remember and you can chant more and more and more. And pretty soon you're in the spiritual world. You're not part of this world anymore. But the mind won't let us, right? The mind wants to go here and think about this and do this and complain about this. And this is not right. He's not right. She's not right. I'm not right. Nothing's right. <laughs> and when we get into that, don't worry about it. You can't change this world, it's what it is. Just change yourself. <laughs> you change yourself, you change everything else around you. Yeah. So that's the way it's always remember the Lord. And that's the easiest and most recommended way, especially in this age of Kali, where people are not so much inclined to spiritual activity. <laughs> Mahaprabhu is made it easy. And he's made it available to everybody, no matter who you are, no matter what position you're in, it's all available for everyone. Not only, but what is he making available? He's making available the spiritual world. Upai. 
and he's opening up Vrindavan to anyone and everyone if they develop this non-ruchi, sweet taste for developing the holy name. When you develop that sweet taste from the holy name and you associate and serve Vaishnavas, then the spiritual world becomes available. And then Mahaprabhu introduces you to Srimati Radharani and she thinks, hmm, should I let him in? I'll give him a chance. <laughs> Looks like a nice devotee. <laughs> and so when, if you're under the care of Radharani, she takes you into Vrindavan. And Mahaprabhu is Srimati Radharani in, in, her, in her mood. So he has that connection where he can bring us to Sri Vrindavan Dham. And that means anyone and everyone is qualified by the mercy of Mahaprabhu. He is so merciful. <laughs> so merciful that it's impossible to understand his mercy. It's not a, the fact that we're still in Krishna consciousness is an example of his mercy. <laughs> okay, so there's so much we can say about Mahaprabhu. Anybody want to add anything or had a question yet, Narayan? Thank you. Thank you for the lecture. I, I find it uh, interesting that all these stories led to the conclusion of humbleness, uh, from what I've noticed. That's how it is. That's Mahaprabhu's main, main preaching, Trinata Peace of Nichena. Tayari Vasya Hishnuna Manina Mamanadena. Kirtana Yasadana. And that, that verse from the Shikshastika prayers is the most important of all verses because that allows you to make progress in devotional service. Unless we develop those qualities, Krishna consciousness becomes very difficult. But it uh, begs the question, where did the, the banana seller go? Did, um, he, did, he, did, he, did he actually... Have to, uh, no, no, what happened was, yeah, it mentions that he joined the association of Lord Chaitanya's devotees. He became an irregular associate. The Lord brought him into the inner group. And the Lord would do that. Yeah. Good, but. He, I think he gave up his bananas <laughs> for that life. <laughs> At least that life. Yeah. Yes. Radharani, is it? Aradhana. Aradhana. Uh, thank you, Madhuraj, for the wonderful lecture, like always. Uh, I just wanted to ask because you mentioned, you slight mentioned, <laughs> that you spoke with. Uh, Kadamba Kanana Maharaj for some time, last for one hour and a half. So I'm just wondering if there is maybe something that you can share with us. About well, that, that was last night in the temple. I spoke about him. Oh. Yeah. They asked me to speak last night, so the devotees came and we had a, a talk. And I mentioned whatever I knew about my association with him and mentioned many of his, you know, outstanding qualities. So that was the topic of discussion. Of course, it centered all around Haridam, Kirtan. And that's recorded, I think, and if you want to hear the lecture. And a few other people, also one devotee from, from Croatia was there, and what his name was? Gudakesh. You know Gudakesh? Yeah. He's from, where's he from? Varazin. Varazin, yeah, he was there. He spoke very enthusiastically about Maharaj. It was nice. Talking about his personal experiences. So, yeah, that was last night. We spoke. So. Anything else? I just wanted to, just wanted to reassure myself 
since Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives this uh, sort of advice to this devotee that just chant Hare Krishna and you won't become proud. So, always. <laughs> chant always. That is basically his ultimate advice. On yeah. yeah. And that's for everybody. Not just for that certain circumstance. Yeah. Practice. Prabhupada said, just practice chanting always. And you actually become, it becomes more and more as you practice it. Remember not to forget and forget. No, remember not to forget. And don't forget to remember. <laughs> if you practice and you become a little bit, then you, when you see you're not chanting, you'll immediately start chanting. And after a while, you'll start recognizing, oh, I'm not chanting now, so you'll start chanting. But if you don't practice, you don't get to that stage of actually remembering. see their background there. <laughs> okay. okay. So we have some more here to it? Yes. I will. have Arati and Kitty. Arati. Okay. Svi možete ustati sad, možemo se ovaj malo...